All right, that's pretty much it for the kind of a little bit more straightforward queries. Everything from here on out, we're going to dial up the difficulty a little bit. So let's check out the next query that we're going to be working on. I'm going to close out all the files I have open just to clean things up a little bit. And I'm going to open up two files. First, get age range, and then get years active range. All right, so I got both these files open. Let's see where these queries are used first, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about the queries themselves. So here we go. I'm going to open up the, or I'm going to click the link on the very top left hand side. And I'm going to look at the search panel on the left hand side. On here, you'll notice that there's two age and years active sliders. And right now they range from 0 to 100. Now I can kind of like drag them in like so. In theory, what we'd be doing with, with these two sliders is filtering down the age range or the years active range of some search results that we get back from the search operation. Now we have not yet wired up any like searching stuff. Right now we are just wiring up something to give a minimum and maximum range to both these sliders. Okay, that's the goal. It doesn't make like a lot of sense to be able to allow users to select all the way up to like 100 years active if the greatest years active that we have for any artist is something like, you know, 30. So what we want to do here is find the minimum years active for any artist that we have and then find the maximum years active for any artist we have. Then we'll repeat the same thing for age as well. So both these queries are going to be nearly identical. Actually, I will say just flat out, yeah, they're going to be pretty much identical for both age range and years active. So the only difference is the property that we're looking at. So I want to give you just a little bit of a tip for uh, writing this query out. Okay, so you're going to take care of both of these in one go. Just to be clear, you're going to take care of both these files, implement both of them. And that tip, well, let's take a look at a diagram really quick. So this is a diagram of my artist collection. On the left hand side, I've only reflected the age of every record. Okay, so this is like, these are each distinct artists, but I'm only labeling their age on here. When our artists get saved to the artist collection, they are not put in there in any particular order. They are completely randomized. So we might have the first entry with an age of 30, then 22, 43, and 14. If I want to very easily find the minimum record or the record with the minimum age, what I could possibly do is sort the entire collection by age, and then I would have something that looks like this on the right, 14, 22, 30, and 43. Now because they are all sorted by age, I can take just the first record, so I will limit the number of records I get back from my query, and look at the age on that record. So I can sort, limit, and that must be the minimum age. Likewise, if I sorted by going from maximum to minimum age, I would end up with 43 as the first record. And so I could just limit to just the first record that I get back from the query and end up with 43. Now the second thing to keep in mind here is that we can't really do these two sorting operations in one go, right? Like if we want to sort from lowest to greatest age and then also sort from greatest to lowest, well, that's really two separate sorting operations. So you might end up having to actually uh, write out two separate queries here and combine them together using the promise.all helper. Now, the last thing I want to tell you here is that the expected return value here is still going to be a promise. So like the return thing that you're going to return here is still going to be a promise but the promise needs to resolve with an object that looks like this, like minimum of 16 and maximum of 45. Okay, that, that is what you need to make sure the thing resolves with. So you might have a kind of intermediate calculation step in there where you take the two results that you pull back, like the minimum record and the maximum record, and then create an object that has a minimum and a maximum property to it. All right, one last thing, one last thing. Just in case you get any really bad errors, like stuff starts really going wrong here as you start to test out the query, if you can't like get the thing, this window to refresh, you can't get the app to refresh or anything like that, you can always flip back over to the terminal, find the running process. So where's our process? Here it is. You can stop it by run, hitting Control C and then just start the entire process 
process back up again with npm start. So you only have to do this if everything becomes like totally responsive or unresponsive. And that might be the case if your query is like really not running appropriately. So I just wanna throw that little tip out there. Also keep in mind that when you restart this thing back up, you gotta wait for that bundle is now valid message. And then you can do the reload and see the app actually appear on the screen. Okay, so that's uh, quite a bit of prep. I'm gonna leave you to it. I'm gonna let you take a shot at both these queries. Remember, you're going to tackle both get age range and get years active. Uh, and the two of them are going to be essentially identical. So go ahead, give it a shot, and I'll catch you in the next section.